A line of strong thunderstorms moves across Kentucky out there today, producing some issues. We will track it right out of here and the new brand of air that comes behind it. Coming up for you. Well, he took all that from that little boy. This killer is back in jail after nearly 24 hours on the run. We're talking to his family about his capture. And we have an update on just how long it'll take to repair a pedway on a central Kentucky campus. WKYT News starts now with First Alert Weather. You are watching WKYT on the CW Lexington. I'm Kristen Kennedy. We're going to take a look right now at a live picture of Citation Boulevard in Newtown Pike where the wind is whipping around our traffic camera. It is easy to see that storms are moving across Lexington. And that is why tonight is a WKYT First Alert Severe Weather Day. And that is why we begin with meteorologist Jim Caldwell. And you can even see this is the actual view of where about where that camera would be. And the storm is not even that heavy at the moment here. It's just the wind that is kind of blowing through the area that's still associated with that initial push. So just general rainfall on that side of town right now. We expand our view and we go all the way out. And you see it's all part of a complete line that stretches from parts of uh, Ohio back into Tennessee as well. Now we have had some warnings and even some tree issues across parts of Franklin County. A reported tree down on Dollar General store there right around Frankfurt a little bit earlier. Still watching some uh, decent thunderstorms coming together from Nicholasville down toward Danville back into Harrodsburg as well. This line though overall compared to what it was at its peak earlier today has weakened considerably so it's not packing quite the same amount of energy and you can even see that without the lack of lightning showing up here as well but still a pretty impressive little uh, area of thunderstorms that have been sweeping through the area. Here we are and to Franklin County and you can still see some of the heavier rain falling into Franklin County. You go over to Scott County as well. This is the only warned area we've had so far and things are a little bit calmer in those areas right now. Severe thunderstorm watch will continue through 9 o'clock for everybody highlighted here in yellow. Folks in eastern Kentucky, you can still see of course some activity. We'll break it all down and track it hour by hour coming up in just a few minutes. We are tracking a developing story in eastern Kentucky. State police say an escapee facing a murder charge is back behind bars tonight. 31 year old William Napier escaped Friday. Troopers say he had just finished a court hearing in Breathitt County and when, was on his way back to the Three Forks Regional Jail. He's accused of stabbing and killing a man last July at the Jackson Inn. Troopers tracked him down this afternoon. Napier's cousin says she is relieved he's back in custody. He had as a little boy that's like, I think he's just turned four, or three or four, started school. Needed his daddy for the first day of school, and Willie took all that from that little boy. When troopers found Napier this morning, they say he did not try to run away. He is back in the Three Forks Regional Jail tonight, and he is now facing escape charges in addition to that original murder charge. A woman is recovering tonight after a fall at the Red River Gorge. The Wolf County Search and Rescue Team says the woman has serious injuries after falling on the Oxier Ridge Trail. They have not released too many details about that rescue, but they do say that the fall is not related to today's rugged Red Trail Half Marathon. We are getting a better idea tonight of how a crash on a Central Kentucky campus is going to impact traffic in that area. Engineers expect a Richmond Road on Eastern Kentucky's campus to be closed for several days. Yesterday, a truck hit the pedway at EKU. This is the first time that type of crash has happened. WKYT's Michelle Chamberlain shows us how work above is affecting drivers below. When it first happened, there was a lot of people like, oh my gosh, let's go look at this. I heard it's bad. The partial collapse of the pedway on EKU's campus was quite a talker yesterday. Like, I heard it was bad, but then once you come over and sit in person, it's actually pretty crazy. <laughs> Thankfully, no one was hurt from the crash, but the aftermath of the accident will have an impact on EKU students and the residents of Richmond. My wife, she was in class near here, and she came over and texted me with pictures of it, but I didn't really get it, and that's why we decided to walk over just to take a look. Uh, it's going to be a logistical change. As you can see, the truck that caused this incident is still lodged underneath the pedway today. I just spoke to an EKU official. He tells me they're not sure when that truck is going to be pulled out, but they do know it's going to be at least three weeks until this area is deemed safe. 
And until the Pedway is secure, Lancaster Avenue between Barnes Mill Road and Crab Street will be closed. It's considered a main artery for not only campus traffic, but also for the city. It is the main stretch for the, the center city of Richmond is Lancaster Avenue. So it, it's going to require people to plan ahead. So I, I hope people will be thinking about that now. In Richmond, Michelle Chamberlain, WKYT. We are told that a group of engineers did take a look at the Pedway and they expect repairs to take several months. The University of Kentucky's decision to sue its student newspaper is not sitting well with some of its board of trustees. Right now, UK is appealing a decision by the state's attorney general that the school violated the state's open records law by withholding documents about a professor's sexual harassment case. At a meeting Friday in Bowling Green, UK President Eli Capilouto argued the school has a responsibility to protect victims' privacy. One of the trustees called UK's position unwise and unfair. Nearly 30 years have passed since UK got a win over Florida. And tonight, the cats are in the swamp trying to end that streak. It is not looking good for them, is it, Lee Kay? It is not, Kristen. The Wildcats were held scoreless in the first half. The second half has been a struggle as well for Kentucky. Currently in the third quarter, it is all Gators. 31 to nothing. Florida jumped out to the 24 to nothing halftime lead. With more than 300 total yards of offense, Kentucky's offense, by the way, has just been stagnant. 89 yards of total offense in the first half. Turnovers have also been extremely costly for the Cats. Drew Barker has three interceptions. The Wildcats, of course, they have a lot of work to do to avoid being embarrassed in this one. 29 straight years, the Wildcats have lost to the, Fl the Florida Gators, and it looks like it could be 30 if the game continues the way that it is right now. Kristen? Lee Kay with the Cats in Florida, fans back in Kentucky got a chance to check out their new practice facility. Thousands toured the building for the first time today. WKYT's Mike Linden took a look. With the Wildcats on the road in Gainesville, the UK Athletic Department opened up the brand new practice facility to season ticket holders today. For the first time since it opened this summer, the brand new UK football practice facility was open to the fans Saturday morning. More than 2,000 season ticket holders got to tour the $45 million facility. According to UK Athletic Department representatives, fans toured the building on the same path recruits do when visiting the school. Some UK fans say the renovations to both next door Commonwealth Stadium and the new practice facility make a big statement. I've been fortunate enough to tour the stadium and, and the practice facility now, and, and uh, it, it just it changes everything for our program. It's, it's just going to be so impactful moving forward. And it's really impressive. While today's tour was only open to season ticket holders, it's still not known whether or not the athletic department will open the facility to the public at some point later this season. In Lexington, Mike Linden, WKYT. Athletics leaders say today was the very first day the building's been empty enough to allow season ticket holders to get a good look. Still to come on WKYT on the CW Lexington, more than 100 people honored the victims of 9-11 with a memorial stair climb. We'll take you to this morning's event. All right, here we go on this first alert severe weather day. We've been tracking a pretty decent line of thunderstorms that was sweeping through the area. Now, it has weakened considerably compared to what it was a little bit earlier, but you see it's working through central Kentucky right now with some decent rainfall and some gusty winds now getting into northeastern Kentucky. Some of the heavy rain, we can see it here in Lexington. This is uh, one of the uh, Lexington Fayette Urban County government's uh, drive cams, and you see here at uh, Georgetown Road and Citation, winds still picking up and of course heavy rain slowing those travelers down right there which will be common with uh, any one of these thunderstorms that kind of get going here so the wind still gusting around checking that uh, camera a little bit for us here on this Saturday. This is our 3D radar and what I've got it locked in on is about 405 today. This is when the storms were just about to enter our area and you notice how tall they are from Elizabethtown all the way back toward Louisville. I mean they were really peaking. Let me bring you up to current time, and you can see that we've lost a lot of that height. And in weather and in thunderstorms, when you lose that height, you start to lose that strength. So they're coming down. Still a little more intense, as you can see, down around the Campbellsville area and back to the Kentucky-Tennessee state line. You move north.
northward, because again, we're looking from the southeast here, they are weakening as well with just general heavy rain makers. Here's what they look like in that format that we're so used to seeing in the 2D. From Nicholasville to Danville uh, into Stanford, tracking some heavier rounds of rain. Maybe an occasional flash of lightning, same thing into Winchester as it's weakened uh, quite a bit there as well. Flemingsburg and back toward Mount Olivet as well, clearing town, but you'll still hear the thunder off in the distance. You'll likely get in on some more heavy rain here soon. Same thing there in Carlisle. So it's not completely finished just yet. Our severe thunderstorm watch has uh, started to really whittle down considerably compared to what it was earlier as well. It runs through 9 o'clock tonight, but as soon as that main line gets through, you will see your weather improve. It'll still be raining out there, but the overall trend is to bring down the severe weather and the significant severe weather risk. As a matter of fact, uh, I think it's dropped quite a bit here over the past few hours. 7 o'clock, we'll fast forward o'clock here, and you can see that the showers are working their way through eastern Kentucky. Not even looking very impressive at that point either. Skies are clearing behind that early on Sunday morning. When the skies clear like this, it'll give us an opportunity to take a dip into some much cooler air. So this front has a purpose that's going to make it feel fantastic around here again. After running in the upper 80s and low 90s past few days, we get a break. Let's roll into the afternoon hours on Sunday. This is what fall like weather is all about. Mid 70s for highs, low humidity, very comfortable stuff coming at us. Here we go off to our seven day forecast where we are, of course, tracking a nice little run in the weather world Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday. And then we start introducing some chances of rain to the forecast and a little more heat and humidity and another big front. It's kind of a back and forth battle, a back and forth, back and forth. <laughs> <laughs> battle coming up here over the next little bit, but we will track all of it, Kristen. And it's finally going to feel like fall? It's going to feel like fall again for you tomorrow, so another good dip. Thank you, Jim. Okay. Sunday marks 15 years since the 9-11 terror attacks in New York City. Each year since, the Lexington Fire Department has held a firefighter memorial challenge. Participants climb hundreds of steps at the Fifth Third Building, all the while remembering those who died. WKYT's Mike Byer climbed with them. Step by step, over 100 people climbed 112 flights of stairs to honor the 343 firefighters killed 15 years ago on 9-11. Our Fraternal Order of Firefighters puts this on every year around this time for 9-11 to, to commemorate you know, the losses of that day. During one of the four trips up the 28-story Fifth Third Building, I followed Assistant Chief Chris Sweat. He says it's no easy task considering the extra weight they carry along with them. Depending on how much you have in your pockets, how much gear you carry with you, you're looking anywhere between 30 and 50 pounds. But there's plenty of motivation to help them get to the top. Come on, you can do it. Now this isn't the only motivation for these participants. Each one of them climbs in memory of a life lost on 9-11. Before the final trip up, each participant, like Nicole Murs, rings this bell. Murs is climbing in honor of fallen firefighter Michael Carlo. Appreciate the men and women, especially Michael Carlo and those like him that went into that building knowing they wouldn't come out. Instead of Cowan. In Lexington, Mike Byer, WKYT. Money raised today helps maintain Lexington's fallen firefighter memorial. Lee Kay's in next with sports with the game still going down in Florida. The game is still going down, but the game is not the one the Kentucky fans were looking for, but it's never been easy at the swamp. Meanwhile, Louisville, they put on a show on Friday night. Those highlights and more next in sports. The Swamp has been unkind to the Wildcats. The last Kentucky win in Gainesville coming back in 1979 and the 30th one. Well, it's not going to happen today. Florida is going to get the win over Kentucky, it looks like. In the third quarter, Kentucky coming off that disappointing loss in week one. Now trail the Gators 38-0 to zero with three minutes left in the third quarter. It has been a dismal day for Drew Barker. Three interceptions on the day. Steven Johnson came into the last possession for the Wildcats. He fumbled the ball on his second snap. So Kentucky, everything going wrong right now for the Wildcats. They need to score some points just to keep from being embarrassed in this one. Currently 38 to nothing in the third quarter. Meanwhile, Louisville played on Friday night at Syracuse. Lamar Jackson had eight touchdowns in the first half. First quarter, Louisville's opening drive, first play 
And Lamar Jackson finds James Quick down the middle of the field. 72 yard touchdown run. Cardinals lead 7 to nothing. Louisville's next possession just three plays later. Jackson strikes again, this time with a seven yard touchdown run. Louisville leads 14 0. Still in the first. Jackson keeps it himself this time. This guy's unreal. 72 yards for another touchdown. The Cardinals would score 21 points in five plays. Louisville goes on to win. 62 to 28. Top ranked Alabama taking on Western Kentucky this afternoon. Second quarter, Alabama with a 10 to 3 lead. And Bama's Eddie Jackson picks off Western Kentucky's Mike White. He's taking it back 55 yards on the pick six. He's still going, and they're still not taking him down. Then Alabama's Ardarius Stewart gets the eight yard pass for the touchdown. He pushes it to 24 to three Crimson Tide. Alabama leads this one in the third quarter, 24 to three. Georgia getting a real test today from Nichols State. Third quarter, Nichols down 13 to seven. Chase Forcade hits Jarrell Rogers, who dives into the end zone. This one would be reviewed and ruled the touchdown. Nichols takes a 14 to 13 lead following drive for Georgia. Jacob Eason finds Isaiah McKenzie on the curl route and he goes all the way. 66 yards for the touchdown. Georgia back on top 20 to 14. Fourth quarter now Nichols State down 26 17. Second and goal for the Colonels. 4K throws it to the corner and finds CJ Bates brings it down for the six yard touchdown. Georgia though would come back to escape with a 26 to 24 victory. Number 24, Texas A&M hosting a cakewalk with Prairie View A&M. Texas A&M quarterback Trevor Knight showing what he can do on his own. He rushes it in for the 32-yard touchdown down the sideline. 17-0 A&M. Still first half. A&M putting the pressure on. Knight to Christian Kirk. That's a 34-yard touchdown. Tiptoes down the sideline. 31-0 Texas A&M. A real barn burner here. 67-0 Aggies. Kentucky Volleyball hosting the Bluegrass Battle this weekend on campus. The Wildcats with a pair of games on Saturday. This morning, Kentucky hosting Virginia. Wildcats up two sets to none. Here in the third, UK freshman Leah Edmond with the kill. Edmond, the Dunbar product, had a game-high 11 kills. Kentucky's defense, though, led the way. Edmond and Kaz Brown putting up the big block. Wildcats had 16 total team blocks in the match. Junior Kaz Brown led the Wildcats block party with a season high 10 block assists. Kentucky sweeps Virginia in straight sets. The Wildcats wrap up the bluegrass battle tonight at 730 against St. Louis to high school football now and last night takes Creek handed Henry Clay one of its worst losses in the Sam Simpson era. The Commodores racked up more than 400 yards of offense. Cameron Workman throwing for 364 yards and four touchdowns coming off a win over Dunbar last week. It's the first time since 2010 that Creek has won its first two games against city teams. It's not just shutting out, it's shutting out a city opponent. We, we go to, we live with these people. So we, in order for people to start respecting us, I saw understand that Taste Creek works hard. You got to start, you got to have games like this. And, you know, that's just what it takes. And we still got a long way to go. We got a long way to go. I'm proud of our kids tonight. They did a great job. They did do a great job last night, but uh, speaking of today, Kentucky football right now struggling at Florida. Nobody thought that this game would be easy for the Wildcats, <laughs> but I think a lot of people thought Kentucky would go down there and put up a bigger fight. Currently, they're getting shut out. It's not looking good. At zero still, no scores. 38 nothing. last checked. Yeah, still zero, third quarter. We'll not be good. right back with a final look at weather.